Alright you guys, I'm here in London at the homie Dav spot. From Japanese performance show to Mims Honda Day, I have been a part of and blessed to be part of the industry and the scene and the culture here in the United Kingdom because of Dav. And I've done some teasers of one of his builds, but now we're gonna go behind the scenes with him and get a feel for what he does, why he does what he does, and of course the build. So check this out as we go behind the scenes with Dav of Mims Honda Day and Japanese performance show. Let's do it. Mm. Dev. Hi. Hello, my friend. I was just telling the guys, all of you guys watching, once again, thanks for being here. Those of you who would already have seen, Frank from Downstar came, Ryan from Rywire came, so you guys have already seen and known what Mims Honda Day is about and Japanese performance show. We've never really had a chance to go over Dev's car. Right, and that's what we're gonna do today. Let's talk about this, let's get straight into it, Dav. You and I have talked about it many times, but let's tell people, what do you have here and what are the plans for it? So this is a Civic Jordan. I've had it since 2005. Uh, it's quite a long time, it's gone through different variations. And this is the third variation. Slowly but surely we're finishing. So I don't know if you guys know, Civic Jordan is a limited run of 500 cars. All that was made. And it was when the Formula One team, they were running, uh, when Eddie Jordan was driving, they uh, were running on engine in the Formula One car. So then they made 500 run of these, which is a limited edition run. Comes in the yellow, it comes with um, interior as well, which is a one-off interior, leather, black and leather, yellow interior as well. So basically ripped it apart and this is where we are at the moment. It's a rare chassis, only 500 made, etc. That just ended up being the platform that you use because virtually nothing Jordan is left or mm -hmm. will be left, right? Apart from the color and maybe the plaque in the center console, okay. that's the only thing that's gonna be left. Other than that, you use this chassis as a canvas to create what? Like if you had to summarize what this build is going to be, what you intend it to be and what you are confident it will be, mm -hmm. what is that? So I'm trying to build one of the best Hondas in Europe. Literally, that's why the entire car has been pulled apart. So every, every single thing is going to be brand new on it. Every nut and bolt to the engine, gearbox, wheels suspension, paint, roll cage, everything is brand new. You guys heard that, right? He said he wants to build one of the best Hondas in Europe, UK and Europe, Yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, and you confidently and politely can say that you believe it will be that. One of the, if not the best in Europe, I'm hoping. I like it. Now, you guys know I don't rock with conceited people, people with bad attitudes. You've seen Dav in the other vlogs, and if you have it, you can already get a feel for the kind of person that he is. That statement is different coming from him than it is coming from someone else who's kind of a little bit known to be maybe arrogant, narcissistic. When a humble person says that, I think it means much more. Do you guys know what I'm trying to say by that? So Dav, who's a very chill, quiet person, when he makes a statement like that, in my opinion, it has kind of a different kind of weight to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let's let's kind of go over this, right? Mm -hmm. I see cage work, I see the floor pan being yeah. cleaned up, weld work, engine mm -hmm. base cleaned up. So where did you get the inspirations to do that? Like why the shaving and tucking? Why these nuts and bolts? Why this power plant, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get into that. Why okay. Why are you utilizing what you're utilizing? You talked about inspiration, where did I get it from? Obviously I saw your build and I wanted to try and do something like that on mine. Okay. Because I've had it for so long, 2005. Um, and like I said, it's gone through three different variations. Yes. Yes, yeah, had three different front cover features on magazines as well. Mm -hmm. So then I wanted to, the only next option was to rip it completely apart and then redo every single thing. Everything down to, like I said earlier, every nut and bolt to the wiring, chassis and engine, real spec harness from Rywire. So yeah, I wanted to do the entire car because I think I've, I felt that was the next step. You touched on it briefly, but you know, I think the last time we talked about this car was probably three years ago. Mm. So I actually honestly had forgotten. My personal build is one of the ones that inspired you to go this hardcore. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else? I mean, engine wise, engine bay wise, I've always seen well, over the years many cars from the States. Yes. They've been shaving and tucking the bays God knows how long. I used to get inspiration from cars I used to see online, you know, America and stuff. And that's when I've done the shaving and the tucking, you know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And now it's been redone again. Obviously the entire car's been painted. My inspiration for most of it. 
I like it, I like it. Inspirations that you've seen online from the States, etc. You have what, you would followed the print media, right? All the different magazines, obviously UK magazines and US ones. And you drew your inspirations and that's basically what's behind this particular build, right? We're gonna talk about these in a moment because anyone who can see anything can realize that there's a whole lot going on here. The ultimate goal of being one of the, if not the best Honda build in UK and Europe when you complete it, that's, that's it's a big grandiose kind of achievement you know you aim high and you know the the potentials to the roof let's just kind of run through it right is it a race car is it a drag car is it a show car is it none of the above all of the above what is it going to be in that regard so it's going to be everything really i mean i wanted to build a car I can enjoy in any in any way some people build track cars some people build show cars i'm going to be building all of it Basically, so it's gonna be a drag car, circuit car, I'm gonna drive it on the road. Something that can do all of it. Everything. I want, the main thing is, I wanna be able to drive it on the road. Yes. To the shows, to the track, drag strips. So yes, it. yes. And so I want it to be everything, you know, I don't want it to be just labeled as one thing. So that's why I've tried to build it how I want. So, what power plant are we gonna have here? So, it's gonna be a V18 um, CSS block, piston rods bottom polished head, uh, GSC cams, and it's gonna be around hopefully six to 650. Six, 650? Wheels. Okay, what transmission? Uh, just a GSR. GSR? With a, yeah, with a um, M factory diff. Okay, for now. six to 650. That's because uh, in the future it's gonna be going four wheel drive. All of that's gonna change in the future. So, okay, you wanna go all wheel at some point. You wanna finish it as a front wheel. Get it on the road, because it's Get been it on, on the road since 2015. 2015, okay. it's been down that long. Mm. Do you have a hard date in mind? No hard date itself. I mean, every time I do set one, it's always pushed. Obviously, as you can appreciate, but you know, this kind of stuff isn't cheap. It takes time and effort if you want, especially if you want to do it correctly, Yeah. which is what I want to do. So I'm not rushing it, but I want all the parts to be the best they can be, so it can be one of the best Honda builds in the UK and Europe. Possible. We've talked about the car, but in a more philosophical sense, right? You know, you, you have Japanese Performance Show, which is, I mean, we just had, you know, we just had it in Telford, fantastic event, and then MIMS Honda Day, which is the largest Honda gatherings in the UK. Aside from achieving what you imagine, is there anything else? Are you trying to, to set the tone or set the bar? Are you trying to inspire people? Like what, what else are you trying to do with this car in, in that sense? So, I mean, the main thing is just building something I want to, I want to build. Yes. I'm not trying to build it for anyone else, for myself. But yes. as you just mentioned, I'm trying to do all of that as well. Obviously, because, you know, when you're young, you're looking at other people's cars who are older. You get inspiration from them. So, indirectly, I know someone's probably looking at these, my car and my build over the years and getting inspiration. Yes. People have told me in the past uh, that, you know, they get inspiration from this car. So indirectly I'm doing that, but it's not something that, you know, it's not the reason why I'm building this car. But you're aware, especially mm. also as someone that hosts events and everything, and you are aware that no matter what, somebody is yeah. looking. Yeah. And, and you have the potential to positively influence mm. them. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. No hard date, you won't say it, but is there an idea? Yeah, I want to try and get this done for next year's Japanese performance show in August. Okay. I want to try and reveal it there, have a car cover, take it off, talk about the car at the show. My other goal is to take it to SEMA. I've never been to SEMA. I want to try and, you know, the first time I go to SEMA, I want to try and take my car. Understood, understood. Okay, so there are some very, very, very lofty goals that he has, which if you aim, you know, if you aim low and you hit, ta-da, right? But if you aim high, and even if you don't get all the way up there and you get just right here, you've accomplished more than the next person. So, you know, Dav, you know how I am, right? I'm a, I love cars, I love builds, but I'm more about the people, mm -hmm. right? And the why they do what they do, not just what they do, but why, right? Not just in the car, but in throwing Mims Honda days, in throwing Japanese performance show, in wanting to build the best you can, to help set the bar, set the tone, and inspire. Why do you want to do any of those things? Why do you do what you do now? Why do you continue to go about it in a way that you think maybe other people don't really do? Well, just the last thing you said, I hate to be the same as everyone else. With anything, cars, life, you know, goals, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I try to push myself. You further yourself at the same time when you're trying to set those kind of goals. You know, if you don't set those goals, then you're not, like you said, you're not going to be 
you're not going to hit anywhere as high as you want to. Right. So you have to set them high and then you try and achieve them and then what you do achieve is something high already. It absolutely does. Okay, and then what are the main inspirations for the existence of the MIMS Honda Day Gathering and Japanese Performance Show? I mean, I've been into cars my entire life, literally since, since a very, very small kid. Yeah. So, and then when I purchased this car, uh, I've always been into Hondas. When I purchased this, then it actually took me into the world and community of you know the Honda community. So it's a great community. I've always loved it. I always loved to be a part of it. Love what I do, and I'm trying to help progress the Honda community here with the help of this car, Mims, the events, all of that kind of stuff. Is it's what I'm trying to do and try to help progress the car community together with everyone else. Perfect, perfect. You know, Dad. We're gonna walk through the vehicle and get a feel for what, what's going on here. But you know, a lot of times people focus on the car. I wanna always focus on the person, you know? So I appreciate, you know, you having me out here. I haven't been out since 19 and we're back out together now, both business and friendship. And then we get to capture this behind the scenes episode with this build. So aside from the Japanese performance show vlog, it was really cool to be able to come here to the private space that no one knows about yeah. and get a glimpse into this build. I saw it before, but I know you've collected a lot of motor parts. There's been a lot of progress in that sense. Yeah. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of focus on this. This is gonna be the center point right here. And I know I'll flash you guys some photos of what he has, but the power plant, the setup, the choice of parts, I think you guys will like it and love it. You'll see when I show you. It's a shame uh, it wasn't complete. Yeah. Yes. Doing this, but we can maybe come back. Right here is gonna be something pretty dope. But then really, the, we're gonna get into the front end. Like I said, you guys, you guys saw this. There's a whole lot going on right here and you'll have an understanding of what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna put the front bumper on so you guys get a chance to really see because the custom front end has not really been talked about too much. And that's one of the things you're getting here that no one else has is kind of the, the look of the whole thing. I did a teaser photo a long time ago, but we're gonna do it right now. So uh, let's do that and you guys will be able to see what this how like clean and wide and menacing and subtle all at the same time this front end is gonna be so let's do it Pretty dope looking front end, right? Super wide. How much wider than stock is it? Can't remember to be honest. Did you so when long. you when you did it, was it to fit a certain wheel or or was it to achieve a certain like shape and arch or what was it? I, I always like drag drag cars. I always had a look as well. And what I wanted to do was have a, a drag looking car which is driven on the road. So the wheels I've got, all that kind of stuff, based around the drag drag looking car. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna have the power as well. So what size are the front wheels? Uh, so I've got Bedak Industry wheels, mm -hmm. um, front yard nine J's. So a nine will fit in this front end? Yeah, because of the back spacing and everything else. It should hopefully, <laughs> hopefully fit. Have you tested yeah. it? I have tested fitted it. Okay. Without the tires, there's no tires mounted. Yeah. But the tires are gonna be extremely wide. Right, right. To right. fill those, those arches as well. Where is this front end from? So this actual front end is from a company which is based in, I think it was Bulgaria. I mean, I bought this a long, long time ago, so yeah. don't quote me, but then it was modified slightly by the body shop. Front end has been opened up more. Okay. It was a smaller front end for the it's cooler. And the arches have been changed as well. So molded the original the mounting points for the arches at the lower part has been mounted into the, the wide front end. All the mounting spots for the bottom of the wings are over here. Okay, so all the mounting spots there are OEM. So it's originally from Bulgaria and it was just modified front end open more and widened. If you can see on the side, the arches. Oh, a cutout. Yeah, so this part, this section is all OEM. All the mounting point for the wing is OEM. Yes. And it's been molded into the wide front. Man, I can't wait to see it with the wheels and tires. The wheels do look good on it. Guys, I look forward to bringing you this build as it progresses. He wants to debut at a Japanese performance show next year. I intend to be here uh, when it unveils at his show to MC and host it, but also to support my friend with his build. And then of course, uh, amidst all that, to continue to support the UK car scene and culture through MIMS and through uh, Japanese performance. So, so Dav, thank you for, uh, you know, having us here mm -hmm. in this space, talking us through the front end, kind of giving everyone a glimpse into what goes on behind the scenes in your mind. Mm -hmm. 
right in this area right here. Right, so the interior wise, what I've done here is removed all unnecessary brackets so you can see all the brackets for the rear seats have been taken out in the middle on the sides. Anything, any brackets were, which weren't needed have been taken out. All the spot welds have been drilled out. It's all been welded over, smoothed. All the seam sealer has been uh, taken out and replaced by a, a thin, neat line. You can see all the drain plugs have been smoothed as well. Uh, it's in the footwells and under the seats and in the under the rear seats as well. Um, everything's been smoothed up and painted fresh, freshly uh, Y56. Y56. Interior wise, um, <clears throat> I actually got inspiration from your car. Um, so it's going to be the dash, door card, centre console. It's all going to be trimmed in black suede, which will contrast well with the, the yellow. I kind of got that inspiration from your builds. Oh, I uh, nice. really, really enjoy how you've done your um, interior. So thank you. Yeah, so something similar to that. I appreciate that. So yeah, we can see the floor plan looks nice and smooth. The floor pan, or did I just say floor plan? I mean, it kind of works itself out. Yeah. It's the floor plan of the floor pan. Yeah. I'm gonna try to get in here, you guys, and open this door. Okay, we got just enough space. Obviously it's dusty and he's gonna clean it up, but there you can see, look at the floor. Nice and simplified, Even the inside the firewall. Well. And then of course back here, look at how clean that is. It's dusty, but it's clean. It's dusty, but it's clean, exactly. I'm gonna go on the other side, UK and Japan driver side, as they say. The correct side. What'd you say? The correct side. The correct side, he says. Man, it looks good. It's good. Can we open the hatch? Yeah, it's still cable tied. Oh, okay, no problem. Right, I'm gonna get over to that side, to the uh, yeah, yeah, other yeah. side. Yeah. Correct side. All right, you guys, so there it is. Behind the scenes with Dab, his personal build. I've got a little bit of a teaser I wanna give you of another build. This is his main one, this is the bar, this is the tone, this is the example, this is the inspiration that he wants to take from who he got inspired from, apply it to a build, and then give back to the culture and the community here in the UK. So the intentions, the ideas are all, are all coming from a deep place, and you know, I rock with that kind of thing, and you guys are watching this because you do too. So, we got a chance to see the inside, custom front end, and customized front end. Now I'm gonna give you a quick glimpse into his second, and there's a third too, but third chassis. Let's get to the second one first. I'll give you a little teaser in just a moment, okay? Okay, let's talk about this real quick, Dad. Mm -hmm. What is the plan for this EG6? Plan is to put a case swap in there and basically finish it off. Just uh, case swap, probably turbo, and they always end up turbos. <laughs> it's never enough power to be turbo. So that's probably the plan at the moment. We've got front lip, we've got first molding, front lip's gone, and yeah. OEM SIR lip, uh, both brand new. Yeah, just basically finish it off. Nice wheels, interior. Is this going to be a, a street car? Yeah, everything I have to be able to drive on the road. No, 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 different. I know you can drive it on the okay. road, but is this one going to be just to be driven on the road? Like literally no. just a street car? No, it's going to be track as well. Obviously, you've got the full cage. Yes, yes. Um, with the door bars and everything else. So it's more going to be driven on the track than maybe a drag strip, for example. But all the cars I'm going to be driving on the road to and from to the track or drag strip. It's 
got the bronze Perspex windows as well. Yeah, yeah. It's actually SIR as well. Well, there it is. This was the glimpse I wanted to give you guys of this other project, and it isn't even the newest one. He has another chassis just picked up. Okay, just tell him. What is it? So I've got a DB8 Type R. Mm -hmm. It's in silver and absolutely mint shell, no rust whatsoever. These engine and seats. Everything else is there ready to go. The Jordan EK EG6 DB8 Type R. So that's what we have going on. I wanted to give you guys a glimpse of this one. Pretty damn good looking chassis already. Crazy interior. And he's gonna finish it off. Case swap, probably turbo. Yes. And uh, there it is, you guys. So behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. And I don't, I can't even show you guys the, the DB8, but um, it was almost here. We almost had a chance yeah, to see it, but yeah. it's okay. When I come back to the UK, we'll get back with Dav and we'll go over the progress on this. And of course the DB8, okay? There you guys go. We'll see you at the next one. Peace.